check, check. There we go. All right, everyone, sorry I'm, I'm late. I had a uh, time zone mix up. So let's go ahead and jump into it real quick. My name is Jason Vinson. If you don't know who I am, I'm a documentary and wedding photographer based out of Northwest Arkansas. Um, to give you guys a quick overview of the type of work that I do, even though we're going to be going through a bunch of images, I like to kind of start off with a quick like minute and 30 second slideshow just to kind of get everybody excited. So I'm going to play that real quick for everyone. Maybe. There we go. Is it, can you hear that? Is there we go. There we go. Well, it starts off with audio. Okay, so that kind of gives you a good idea of the type of work I do. That was our, um, that was just like a highlight reel from our 20, uh, 2021 weddings. But today what we're going to be doing, um, and I have a quick little image of my family spraying champagne. Um, but today what we're going to be doing is just kind of walking through a handful of my favorite images and breaking down how I shot them. Um, so this is one of my favorite images, and basically what happened is this couple got married inside of a cloud. It was super foggy the entire day. So what I did is I set up one off-camera flash with a CTO gel directly behind them, so that's the orange that you see. And then I set up another light that um, there was a 600 Pro way off in the distance, so I needed a lot more power because it's going to be traveling a lot more distance and going through a lot more fog. So that next light is, uh, has no gel on it, so it goes a little bit more blue. Um, and from there, it's just firing through the fog. And so anytime you have fog and you backlight it, it makes the fog kind of glow, okay? And then from there, all I have to do is switch up my shooting position. Okay, um, switch up my shooting position. I turn off the orange, uh, the orange light. Uh, let me get into slideshow mode. You see that a little better. Turn off the orange light and just reposition myself and I can get something like this. And then I just have my white balance set for the natural white balance of that flash that has no gel on it, okay? And if anybody has questions while we're going through this, definitely speak up. I'd love it to be like, a, like an actual conversation instead of me just talking at you guys. But the next one here, this is just a moment from an Indian wedding during the Bharat. Uh, we are shooting the, uh, the bride getting ready. And I had heard her mention that the Bharat was gonna go right down the street, like right below her window. And so I made the mental note like, hey, they're probably going to be peeking out the window to try and see that. So as soon as we got to the area where I knew her hotel room was, I ran across the street and jumped up on top of a trash can so I could get above the crowd. And then I was able to catch a picture of the bride and she's like, someone else in the crowd had seen her. And so she's like saying, shh. And so I caught this moment of the groom coming down on his horse with the bride saying like, shh, whisper like, I'm, I'm hiding up here, okay? Um, for this image, uh, what was, I, don't remember, I didn't even know who hung the dress on the window. I think it was maybe the videographer um, had hung the dress in the window. This is not a great image, so this is, this is just like showing the, the scenario. Um, but I noticed the dress hanging in the window. I was like, huh, I wonder if I can see that from outside. So I run down all 
I go down all the elevator and I run outside to this big like overlook area and I look up and I notice that you can actually see the dress. But this is where editing comes into play. You have to understand how you can push your files, how you can edit with your dynamic range. And so whenever I saw the file, like whenever I see the image, I can see the dress. This is what I see with the naked eye. This is the image right out of camera, which the lines are cool. But if you look really closely, Right here, you can see the dress and the bride like reaching up to like get the dress off the hanger. But knowing what I can do in post, I can take the photo and I have the end result in mind, which is this. Okay? So knowing how to get the image that you see and understanding what you can do in post production so you know how to take the image whenever you're uh, lining stuff up. Okay? Then with the same exact scenario, I liked that idea of shooting at the window, and so I made a mental note of like, hey, when the bride and groom go up to their room, I'm gonna follow them, I'm gonna set up a light and just shine it as bright as I can into their room, blow it all to white, and then I'll run down and then have them do a quick little pose, and I get like, the light. this is the lights of the hotel, and a handful of people have their drapes open and their lights turned on, but they really pop because they're framed against something that's completely white, okay? The next thing that I really like to do is play with uh, lights. So I do a lot of off-camera flash work, um, a lot of stuff with like flashpoint strobes. And then I also do a lot of stuff with constant lights, so Stella Pro lights. If you guys haven't checked them out, definitely check them out. Um, but I've also started playing a lot with mixing the two of them together. Um, so that's what this is. I have one, I have two lights behind them. One is a constant light. I'm shooting at like one-fourth, one-eighth of a second. And the other light is a strobe. And so as the shutter is opening, the constant light lets you see the rain streak through the frame, and then the flash goes off and it freezes everything. So that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing the motion of the rain behind them from that constant light, and then when the flash goes off, it freezes everything else. Okay? And then I'm just relying from there. I'm not using a tripod or anything when I shoot at uh, super low shutter speeds. I'm just relying on my in-body camera stabilization and making sure that they, they stay still. So I tell them, like, hey, whenever you get into the pose, just be as still as you can. And usually people can be still enough for like one fourth of a second, okay? But again, here's another example of that playing with mixing off-camera flash with constant lights. Um, but in this situation, uh, Flashpoint has this setting where you can do what's called multi. So if you have a longer exposure, you can say, hey, within a one second exposure, I want the flash to go off two times and at this interval. And so that's what I did here is the flash is going off, I think this is like one eighth of a second. The flash is going off twice within that one eighth of a second and I'm moving the camera for that entire one eighth of a second. So when the flash goes off once, it freezes them and I'm moving the camera, it goes off again and it freezes them. And then I have another light that's constant and that's what's giving you the drag. Okay, but again, knowing what you can do in post because this is what the camera, this is what the image looks like from the raw file but knowing how to push and pull your dynamic range, how to get your colors to pop, how to really dial in your contrast, okay? And then you can also play around with it turning off the flash and now we're just getting the drag, okay? So getting a couple different variations from the exact same setup just by turning a light on or off, okay? This is a situation we actually uh, shot this wedding in Indianapolis and we were supposed to have like three hours of uh, portrait time, like going all through Indianapolis downtown and stuff. And the wedding ended up, uh, the wedding was supposed to be at 1, and the bride hadn't actually finished her hair and makeup until like 1.30, and we still had to like travel, so we basically lost all of our portrait time. So I had a lot of time of like playing around while she was getting ready, so this isn't actually a setup shot. She's actually just getting her makeup done, and she has her eyes closed as the makeup artist is like getting something pre prepared. And I noticed that some, uh, some like hard sunlight was coming through one window, and so I grabbed the makeup, uh, makeup artist's little pocket mirror and I reflected the light from, a mirror, from the window off the mirror onto her eye. And it just adds a little bit of interest, okay? Uh, this is a situation, this was our very first wedding uh, after COVID. And so I had, I had the idea of like having these masks like up in the air and kind of, kind of like, the, uh, like a champagne type shot, but with masks. Um, it also helps that this was the first wedding after COVID and both of them are nurses. Uh, so the masks have a little bit of like a double meaning. Uh, the problem was is the very first time that I went and did it, I just had like, I got all these, I ordered these masks on Amazon. So I just had them in my truck and I just grabbed like a big handful and I like threw them up and then tried to take the photo and it was just like a clump. And so I went and got a guest. I was like, hey, can you help me throw these masks? And we throw them up and it was like a couple clumps. And so I ended up going and getting, I think like five different guests 
to help throw mass, and they're kind of spread around so that we can get good coverage where the mass will actually fill the frame. But as far as lighting goes, we have three lights here. So one light's coming from camera left to light one person's face. Another is camera, uh, the other side lighting the other person's face. And then there's one light behind them, and that's why the masks really pop and glow, because that backlight is actually making those masks glow like that. Okay. So speaking of champagne shots, so I've done like four or five different champagne images, but I have this thing where even with like creative portraits or if a couple requests a certain portrait, I want to give them something unique. So the very first champagne shot I did was this one. This is two flashes, again, one on either side, but slightly behind them. Because anytime you have particles in the air, you want to make sure that you can backlight that so that those little particles will glow. And so one's coming from behind and lighting her face and also rim lighting his head. The other light's coming from the other direction, rim lighting her hair and lighting his face. Okay? But later on, we went on an engagement shoot and they were like, hey, that, that champagne photo that you have on your website, we want that for us. I was like, well, let's get you a champagne shot, but let's do something different. So we got them this. So this is you know, a different posing situation. They're spraying in the same direction. Um, I set up a flashlight just on a rock, and so that's why you can see the streak of, and the movement of the champagne, and then a flash to freeze it. Okay? And then again, another person asks, hey, can we get a champagne shot? It's like, okay, well now, instead of getting a close-up of the champagne, let's pull way back and show all of the spray of the champagne and have the couple a little bit smaller, something a little bit more graphic. Okay? And then after I got this, I was like, oh, well, these kind of look like stars, right? So the next time I have the opportunity to do a champagne shot where there's a really starry night, what happens if we get those, star, those champagne particles to mix with the stars? Um, so this is a situation where it's just one off-camera light. But what happened is with my settings, I had to have such a long exposure and gather so much light in order to see the stars that I couldn't get the power of my flash low enough. So they make ND filters. Okay. Um, so they make ND filters, but I didn't have any ND filters. Um, and so what I ended up doing is I took a CTO gel, so a color temperature orange gel, and stacked it on top of a color temperature blue gel, and those two colors combined neutralize each other, and I was able to like, make a makeshift ND filter uh, so that I could cut the power of my light enough so that I could mix the flash with the stars. Okay? Another situation uh, where, you know, Always being open to what you see in the moment and being inspired by what you're shooting. I'm taking this portrait, um, and it's really low light, so I'm shooting again at one fourth of a second because I'm trying to maximize my dynamic range by keeping a low ISO on my camera. And while I'm taking a portrait, my hand moves a little bit on one of them, and I notice how the constant light is streaking. And I was like, oh, well, what happens if I do that intentionally and make it streak a whole lot more? And this is what you get out of doing that. You just get a little bit closer, and you get the whole chapel to streak, and then the flash pops, and it um, freezes them within that doorway. Okay? I think we're about running out of time, but does anybody have any questions? I know I kind of like flew through that, but I wanted to try and get as much value for you guys as I could since I was a little late. What's that? No, I have it to set the front curtain sink because with rear curtain sync, if someone's moving through a frame, you want to capture them at the end of it because you want it to streak, but because I'm manually moving my camera, it doesn't matter. I get to choose what direction it is, so it doesn't matter what, like, if it goes off first or last. I prefer it to go off first so that I can get them dialed in where I want, whereas if it was rear curtain sync, I'd have to try and move the camera to the perfect position to freeze them, whereas I can freeze them in the correct frame with front curtain and then do my dragging. Yeah, with that it would have been better because you can see the movement. It would have been better to have it be rear curtain sync. Yep, yeah, for sure. Any other questions? Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for coming, guys. Okay, thanks. <laughs>